Welcome everyone to the online quality online course series course activities and student engagement. This particular workshop aligns with quality matters standard number five uh, and I will give you more information um, throughout the workshop on what that means but um, quality matters is a researched base um, set of peer-reviewed um, standards um, that kind of just equate to best practices when you're designing an online course. So hopefully that is what everyone is interested in learning about today. Uh, my name is Tracy Miller and I'm the online teaching coordinator in the Faculty Development Instructional Design Center at NIU. A uh, little bit of contact information, um, so if you do have any questions or you want to talk a little bit more about your online teaching and your online course design, shoot me an email. I'm glad to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation um, or just even answer some, some questions for you. Isabel, uh, I did not see the moon. I heard, I heard about it driving in this morning and I was so disappointed because I was actually um, outside early this morning taking my um, dog out for a, a potty break. So I wish I had thought to look up and see what was going on. So what I expect from um, today's session is that I'm really hoping everyone will be active participants and um, really connect with each other each other via the text chat or even the audio. Um, I see we've ar we're already having a nice dialogue in the text chat area, so I really feel like we've got some active participants here today. Um, I hope that we'll be able to interact with one another and support each other. So I, I always ask in my workshops if anyone else has an idea, um, if they tried something before and how it worked out, um, because I think we can all learn from each other. Um, but let's also support each other. Um, so if we just want to give each other a smiley face or a thumbs up, um, we're all in here to learn together. Also, while we're going through the workshop today, I hope that everyone will reflect on the content and the activities um, in their courses now and how you can really apply some of the strategies we're talking about today into your own teaching. So really take a moment and, and think about that so that um, you, know, you can really start to take these ideas and use them in your course. I do have some workshop objectives today, and they include um, being able to de define and act what we mean by active learning and engagement. Um, I'm also going to talk about the benefits of incorporating these strategies into your online course. And we're going to talk about three different types of interaction. Interaction is sort of the um, that really important piece when we talk about student engagement um, and activity in our course. Uh, and then uh, what sort of design elements uh, an online course would have if it had this active learning component in it. Again, I'm going to, I see a couple new folks showed up, so I'm going to make sure that I capture that in my attendance. Thank you all. Welcome, everyone, for joining. Okay, so my first kind of activity I want to do is what does it mean for learning to be active? Add some thoughts into the text chat area on what you think it means for learning to be active. I'll give you just a minute to add something in the text chat area. Teresa, I see you have your microphone on, and, and that's fine um, if you want to share an idea, but I would recommend that you mute it just so we don't necessarily hear the um, background noises in your office. You might want to keep that a little more private. Okay, I'm getting some ideas in. Um, active learning, Lenny says hands-on activities, Melissa says interaction with others with feedback provided, um, engagement, participation, discussion, interaction among students, um, learning comes from students, not just professor. Great ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the energy with these responses um, and I agree with everything. Amanda says almost anything beyond students listening sage on the state kind of lecture. Yes, that can definitely be very passive, right? 
um, opportunities for students to share ideas, perspectives. Um, Bill says physical, emotional, intellectual involvement. Oh, wow, that is that is really powerful. Um, Staler says students take charge of their own learning. That is definitely um, a active learning strategy, and it's one that we're going to talk about. So thank you for your energy in that answer. Um, I pulled out um, sort of a um, just a definition, sort of a Wikipedia type of de definition, and a couple other sources, um, prints that I added down on the bottom. Active learning is defined as any instructional activity that engages students in the learning process. Um, the thing that um, Sailor said about students taking charge of their learning, uh, that's very motivating when they take charge and um, they kind of become responsible for their own learning. Uh, that definitely engages them more. Um, it also requires students to participate in meaningful learning activities and reflect on what they're doing. So doing is a big word here. Meaningful learning activities, we're going to talk a lot about what meaningful learning activities could be. Um, but some other words that you've already shared with us, um, participate. Um, that doing, that reflecting, all of those things um, can really create an active, engaging environment for your students. Um, active learning environments must be student-centered. That gets back to learning, um, students being responsible for their own learning, taking charge of their lear own learning, um, not just listening to a lecture or the sage on the stage. Uh, active learning environments, students are responsible and accountable for their own learning. You, you jumped the gun with my uh, slide here. Uh, that's exactly a attribute of an active learning environment. Um, so in some ways, we have to give them a little trust um, if they are to be responsible um, and accountable for their own learning. And then, of course, we need to have some consequences if they're kind of slacking in that. Uh, so one of the things I said we were going to talk about is the three types of interaction. And so um, we constructed this sort of model to be able to talk through it a little bit. And so the three types of interactions has these three pieces, components in a course. The faculty, the instructor, the students in the course, and then any sort of content that's in the course. So the first type of interaction is that interaction between the faculty member and the students. And just as some ideas of how that might appear in an online course, um, I kind of shared and splattered over the um, slide here. And some of them I've made a little bit larger um, because they usually um, ha have maybe more impact. Um, in this interaction. Um, my favorite type of interaction between faculty and students is their feedback on their learning. So any type of grading you're giving them and then feedback how they can improve their work, what they're doing really well, um, that feedback is a, a great way for you to interact with your students. Um, there's sort of easier ones. There's announcements. There's re um, reminders. In your um, announcement, maybe you're going to have some type of encouragement, maybe some type of tips for success, uh, maybe even calling out some students that are doing really great work. These are all ways that you can still connect and interact with your students. Um, and I think we can forget about that. It's very natural in a face-to-face -face course. But in an online course, we want to be really intentional about this interaction between faculty and students. And these arrows are moving in both directions. So what type of opportunities are you um, allowing for the students to interact with you, which I haven't talked about that much? Um, are you letting um, them provide you with any feedback? Do you have a um, question and answer forum? Um, is there a reflective exercise? Um, can they kind of comment um, on some piece of content that they that you've given to them? Uh, make sure it's a two-way street when you're talking about interaction between faculty and students. So here's some um, tips when you're doing that. 
The first one is to model your desired behavior. So any type of announcement, discussion board post, um, even maybe a video. Um, what are you looking for? What level of professionalism are you looking for? How formal do you want to be? How casual do you want it to be? Um, whatever you're looking for with your students, make sure you model that behavior so they know what to second bullet point, um, expect. So set those clear expectations, um, whether that be some sort of etiquette um, or whether that's timing issue. So that's the second one where you're going to plan to provide feedback to the students. Let your students know how soon they can expect feedback from you, uh, whether it's a response and a discussion board um, or whether they're going to get their grades and feedback from you. Um, plan for it. Let your students know um, when that's going to be and that's when we get into the response time. So when you're um, starting that interaction with your students, set these clear expectations um, and that will be beneficial to your students and it will um, save you some time um, worrying about um, getting back to students too soon uh, um, but also committing to your students that you will get back to them in a reasonable time. So my next type of interaction is student to content. How are the students going to interact with the content? And uh, th that gets around um, even to Bill's physical, emotional, and intellectual involvement. How are they really going to put their emotions into how they um, are interacting with this content? And so anything that you can uh, use that will help the students understand that they are doing something. There is some sort of, even if it's a mental exercises, there is some activity that's happening. And so that really comes in the form of some verbs that you can use when you're describing um, what students will be doing with this content. If you read this journal article, you will then be able to apply that information to this next activity. Um, these verbs, these action verbs, um, really help the students, again, interact with the, um, the content. Um, and you're being really intentional about how, you're, um, how they can do this. Um, and that's when you're maybe setting up your instructions. Uh, for the week that, again, you're going to read, watch, maybe a more passive activity, but if you're going to be doing something, if you're going to be really um, investigating something, let your students know they're going to be interacting with these, these really actionable verbs. So how can we do that? Some tips. Um, use a variety of content types. Um, a variety um, the different types will speak to different students in different ways, and so that will help them have that interaction, have that engagement with the content. Um, give them opportunities to practice. So if it's a practice quiz, um, it's a, if it's a draft of something, or even if it's a, a real activity. Um, I know Bill teaches music, um, and there's all kinds of practice activities for that. Let the students um, try some practice, maybe film, film themselves, um, get some um, helpful critique back, um, refine their work. It's important to incorporate those um, kind of safe zone practice activities. Um, here's another set expe expectations up. Um, it was in the last bullet. Here's how you can do it um, with the student content activity. Make sure you let them know what is required activities versus maybe practice activities or supplemental activities. Um, be very clear that this activity is required. Um, that way they're not sort of confused. And if they're, it's all required, say it. All activities are required. There's nothing supplemental. Um, uh, just be, again, really clear about the expectations. Um, give them a schedule of activities. Um, and maybe it's a really brief description of what the activities are and it's early in the course so if there's something that's going to kind of come up that's going to be heavy in let's say week four the students can kind of anticipate that make room in their schedule uh, maybe even reach out to you ahead of time if they know that an issue is coming up 
Um, so that's a good way um, of letting them know that this act, you're expecting this activity um, and they should be expecting this activity to come up in week four. And then let them know how these activities support their um, learning objectives, their achievement of the learning objectives. So it doesn't seem like busy work. You chose these activities with a purpose um, and let the students know what that is. My final type of interaction is actually student to student. So this is that social constructivism, cognitivism, um, where students are going to learn from each other. Just like I was hoping that we would all learn from each other in today's session. Um, so how can you design your online course that will support student to student interaction? Um, and so uh, discussion board is a big one. Um, I, I talked about today how we were hoping to support each other in, um, in this environment. One of the ways you can do that in a, in a text chat area like this, that is if you agree with something someone says, just give them a plus one. And that's just a simple text speak type of language that says, I agree with what you just said. And it's really easy to do, um, but it feels good when you see it and somebody agrees with you. There are some other ways that you can do that. Um, team projects, um, creating maybe a social space. I have the informal and social area here. Um, that's, that's an idea to um, create a place where students may connect on a more social level or maybe slightly off topic level. Um, you don't want them to necessarily be doing that in a content area, but you're giving a, a place to have that hallway conversation that they might have had in a face-to-face -face course, or maybe that right before and that right after kind of conversation that they have, we're still allowing them to connect with each other. Um, so they have that sense of belonging uh, that can be very important in an online course. So uh, tips for doing that. Consider your students in your course a community of learners. Somehow they come together in this course and now they've become their own little community. Um, just by having that sort of in your mind, um, it may change the way you're going to design the course. Um, include opportunities for that off-topic informal social interaction. And I just gave you some really intentional ideas on how to do that, uh, maybe through that um, social cafe, um, but it may also happen in other ways. Um, for instance, if you had a uh, hashtag, uh, Twitter hashtag that you were going to use and students could kind of follow that conversation, follow each other on Twitter, um, maybe you're going to create a Facebook group. Um, they may be forming them on their own. Um, I'm going to be honest with you about that. Um, your students may be connecting with each other. Um, in those ways already. Um, and so if you're including opportunities for them, maybe that's a, a way that you have a little bit more control on what's happening in those opportunities. Um, and if you do, again, those clear expectations. Um, we want civil interactions. We want helpful, um, could be constructive, could be um, a critical reflection, uh, but we want to give them those guidelines through etiquette, um, but also through uh, their frequency and scope. So any kind of uh, instructions we can give them on how often they should post to a discussion board, how long the discussion board should be, um, a blog, if you're using a blog, how often you want them to comment on each other's blogs. Let them know um, what your expectations are and how they can meet them. Will this PowerPoint be available? Sorry if I missed this earlier. Actually, Teresa, this um, recording will be available later, so you can go back and, and watch the recording, hear my um, voice over it. And of course, the wonderful thing is you can fast forward past the stuff that um, you're less interested in and go right to the, uh, the important pieces. So that is how it will be available to you. You're welcome. So here are the three different interactions, and really, they're all very important. Um, so 
there are, I would say, uh, the spectrum of active learning strategies that go from very simple types of active learning strategies um, all the way up to these very complex ones. And these are just some ideas that um, some of them will look very familiar, some of them you're already doing in your face-to-face -face courses. Um, it's just a matter of how do you take these active learning strategies and incorporate them into your course. So we will, we will go over some ideas of how to do these, um, but some really simple ones, a uh, one-minute paper. Again, we might have done them in our face-to-face um, -face courses, but it still works in an online course. Have the students maybe once a week, maybe once a month, write a one-minute paper on, on what they learned this week, um, what they hope to have learned more about, um, and, and turn it in. That um, makes them, again, reflect on their own learning, um, helps them kind of unpack it in their own minds, and lets you know uh, where there might be some misconceptions. Um, so that's a really easy one to do. Um, there are uh, opportunities to um, peer review if you want to have students maybe work in in a group environment and have um, an opportunity to look over each other's work. We can still do peer reviews in online courses. Um, we're actually going to talk about a role-playing exercise that I've kind of outlined and I'm going to ask you to kind of help me give me some feedback on how you think I did on a role-playing activity. Uh, and you can see all the way up to experiential learning site visits. Um, it's not impossible to have a field trip in an online course. It just might be a field trip that they go to independently, um, maybe in their own area, in their own um, geographic community. So there's just, a, just, again, a whole spectrum of activities that you can try with your students. Uh, that slide's really meant to um, push you a little bit to say, you know, I think I really can do those activities that I really love to do in my face-to-face -face course. I just need to approach them a little bit differently in my online course. So now let's get into incorporating those activities into your online course. Um, and so th here's why I think it's important to do this, some strategies. It, it helps uh, um, you, I think, identify activities. Um, and I said we were going to reflect on things. Think about your course right now. What are those activities? It's your first strategy. What's that activity where you really feel like the students are just getting it? Those light bulbs are going off. Um, I talked to... Um, actually, a, a faculty member this morning that does uh, does field trips, and he's like, "Well, I've I've actually done alternate um, field trip activities for those students that couldn't take an all day Saturday and you know go off and do this activity. So it might have even been something that you've already done, but we don't want to lose those activities where the students are. They're really just getting it." Um, Whatever it is that you want the students to be able to do, give them opportunities to do it. So when we go back to those action verbs we were talking about with the student to content interaction, if you say you want them to blank, give them as much um, space and time so that they can actually do it. Don't make it as... Um, a, a kind of a work in um, that you're hoping they kind of do it, but you really didn't give them any time to do it because they already had to, um, you know, read so much, take quizzes, complete their assignments. If there's a do in there, make sure that you value that by giving them the time and space to do it. And then give them time to make meaning. Um, this is a great thing about online learning. Face-to-face, -face, don't get me wrong, it's great because it can be kind of shoot from the hip, impulsive, first thoughts. Um, but in an online course, students can really sit back and say, um, 
what does this mean to me? What do I think this means? Um, I last week I was at a, a workshop and they had us look at these goals and they said go ahead and write those goals down paraphrase those goals in your own words and I really found it amazingly powerful because that's what I was I was making my own meaning to what I thought these goals meant and um, and they gave me that time to do it too it wasn't again that afterthought and that's that student taking responsibility for their own learning um, when they're making their own meaning. Um, so I said we were going to try this role playing activity. Um, I want you to give me honest feedback about this activity and see if um, you think it uh, meets a lot of the strategies and expectations that we've already talked about. So let me tell you a little bit about the activity. Um, if you click on the screen, uh, it should blow it up for you to about 150%. I know it's small. I was trying to get a lot sort of on this one screen. Um, but basically what it is, it's, it's a community health activity. And it's asking the students to work in small teams. Uh, they're going to role play. They're each going to have a role, uh, a scientist, a public health official, and a community leader. And then they're going to kind of go through this um, community health plan and, uh, again, kind of take on the role of these um, three different people. And so one of the things that I looked for is I wanted to make sure it aligned with an assessment. So uh, the students were going to do this activity. Why are they doing this activity? Um, because it's going to help them prepare for the final presentation at, at a health fair. Okay, so that, that gives them that relevance, it gives them purpose for this activity. Um, it also, I told them specifically how it aligned to the learning objective. So in this particular course, there's a learning objectives that students will be able to create a community health plan. So they're going to create a health plan, but then they're going to kind of deconstruct it. They're going to take it, take it apart a little bit through this role playing activity. And then finally, I used the biggest of action verbs, right? A activity, action. Um, and so hopefully just by using those words, um, it sounds like a lot of doing is going to go on. Um, so that's the activity that I've constructed. Um, I also came up with kind of um, a little bit more of that expectation, a little bit more of that opportunity for um, students to be able to connect with me and make meaning. And I've done that by um, giving them a place that they could work in their team area. So this is actually Blackboard groups. Um, I've given them some collaboration tools that they can share documents, um, have um, brainstorming meetings, um, take notes in, all of that they can um, use. I also suggested um, completing a team contract, and that's so everybody's going to have that um, best student to student interaction behavior. Um, this journal will allow them to reflect as they learn through the activity, um, but I will also give them some um, time and immediate feedback. Um, maybe not super immediate, but timely, um, and let them know how they're doing. So I'm hoping I'm kind of addressing all these things in this, um, in this activity that I've constructed. Um, so think about kind of going through that checklist in your head um, when you complete an activity like this. And you know, you're not going to be just doing one. You're going to be doing several. And it may be different in your particular discipline. So whenever I think about these do's, um, I pull out D thinks creating significant learning experiences. Um, we typically will send some faculty members to this. Um, there's a companion 
um, Institute that happens in May, sometimes early June. Uh, Dee Fink's a great professional developer. But I pulled out this chart from his book, and I want to think about um, my content and how I'm going to take that content and create some experiences and some doing um, and in, in a very direct intentional way so I'm looking at kind of the the white out area this has the most action this most active learning strategies in it um, might have some content that's some sort of a, a original data or original sources um, data could be um, maybe some some data that was collected by the student or data that was collected by a researcher that they're kind of um, working with. Um, and then what can they do with that? Um, can we create some doing in authentic settings? Um, will students have opportunities uh, to not just read about it, but go and do it? Um, this could be really them doing it, or it could be observing the phenomenon. And there is um, real meaning and real importance to that. Um, I'll go back to Bill. I'm always picking on Bill. But you know, he teaches music. There's an advantage to going to see a band, an orchestra, an ensemble. Um, students can definitely benefit from that by observing the phenomenon. And then coming back into the course and describing what they saw, um, noticing certain um, concepts maybe that are being introduced that week um, through that observation. And then in any type of reflection. Um, and I just, again, just a couple ideas to how students can reflect on their learning in an online course. Um, it could be um, any kind of reflective discussion, um, blog post, um, even turning in an assignment that, that would be between um, you and the student, um, journaling, of course, concepts maps, um, which is something we haven't talked about a lot. Um, just that's almost the make meaning part again, um, where they're connecting different things because they're connecting them through some kind of concept map. How are things together? Um, how do they work together? How should they be organized? Uh, Bill says definitely and there's a no credit requirement for all our music students to attend performances or they don't graduate. See that's how important it is and, and I believe it. Of course they need to do that. Um, there are also some other ways that students can um, reflect together um, and that could be through a discussion. Um, I've seen discussion boards done where um, somebody might start a discussion board and the next student needs to um, respond to that initial one, but the third student really needs to um, elaborate from there. They can't necessarily say the same thing. And it's kind of interesting that um, it kind of refines their thinking as they're going through this um, discussion forum. So I've seen that work pretty well. Um, so think about this when you're initially designing those active learning activities. Um, so we're going to do a little activity. I've been talking long enough. Um, we are going to use the whiteboard. So you should see at the top of your screen um, a T. So we're going to start with the T. This will allow you to add some text on the screen. You can see you can change colors at the top. A blue dot should have appeared when you click, clicked on that T. You can change your colors. Excellent. I see folks adding things already. In different colors. Very good. I promise you there is a purpose to this whiteboard practice, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to do it. Don, I see you added hi in the text chat area. If you want to add it to the whiteboard, look up at the top of your screen, top left hand side of your screen. Um, if you're on a iPad, I'm not sure if you are, you may not have all, all the bells and whistles, but 
there is a big T at the top of the whiteboard, and then you simply click somewhere in the white space on the board and add your hello. Looks like we're doing a great job. Congratulations, everyone. You're doing amazing. But I'm about to erase all of your work. Sorry about that. <laughs> the next thing I'd like to practice is creating shapes. So right next to that T at the top, there is a rectangle. Um, when you click on that, you can see you can create a rectangle, an ellipse, or a line. And again, you can, you can change colors. Awesome. Very cool. And you can see we're doing nice straight lines. Okay, excellent practice. So we practiced that. So now I want you to use your skill in writing on the whiteboard. And I want you to go back and look at um, another activity that I've created, another contemporary health issues activity. Um, and kind of give me some feedback on it. Can you um, tell me if I've, um, do I have clear expectations? Um, can you tell what you need to do? Um, are there opportunities for the students to um, reflect on the, their work? Anything that you can come up to, you can point to it, circle it, um, or you can even add some things into the, the text chat area. Many choices for you. So I see someone has circled module objectives. So I've been very clear on how these align with the objectives, hopefully. Um, yes, both the module of objectives and the learning objectives four and five. Good underlining, too. Um, someone circled explore. Um, that I was hoping it was a kind of an actionable verb there. Um, the reflection is down there with what does health mean to you. Maybe making some meaning there. Um, this activity prepares you for your uh, community survey assessment. Yes, so I'm letting them know that the assessment is coming up and this is going to help prepare you. Awesome job, everyone. Anything that you think I'm missing? And there's a lot to read through, so I could definitely be missing some something that you wouldn't notice right away. While everyone's sort of reading, I'm going to take a drink of water. Is this an individual activity? Um, Yes, it is meant to be an individual activity, but you're right. I could have been a little bit clearer on that. Thank you for that feedback. Um, here is an example of how I'm, I'm hoping, um, letting the student um, have some time to, to make meaning. And just by writing it out um, and giving them some, some time to do it, um, should help them make some meaning to it. Um, but I'll give you a little synopsis of, of what this one's all about. Uh, the learning objective, you might say, is that students um, should be able to identify the differences between a narrow perspective on health and a broader perspective um, on health. And so um, how do you think students might have that emotional connection uh, that we were talking about earlier. And I think the is module one located elsewhere a reading might be from the last page. So I just wanted to acknowledge that it was there. I could have been clearer about that.
Maybe they can give an example of their own similar story with an emotional connection. Excellent. I love that. And you can you can give me some feedback, but I want to make sure that you I give you time right now to think maybe about one of your activities um, and how you would allow students um, some time and some space to make meaning from it. So I am okay with that too. And I'm again going to be quiet a little bit so that you can maybe jot some notes down um, on how you might do that in one of your own activities. Okay, so let's talk about um, the reflection. Uh, we started the first activity already. Um, if, if the notepads are at the ready or if you're going to go back and watch this again when you have uh, maybe a little more, bit more time to reflect on that, I encourage you to do so. Um, what strategies? will you use in your online course? And so again, jot them down for yourself. If you'd like to share it with the rest of us, um, then just add it to the text chat area. Uh, I think I read something about there's a um, sharing it with others. Maybe it's your New Year's resolutions um, are more likely to be acted upon if you kind of throw them out there and share them with other people. I'm taking a minute. What am I going to do? Amanda, I like the idea of individual field trips, and maybe each student could share their experiences with a class. Yes. And who doesn't like talking about their field trips? I'm committing to doing a blog article on active learning strategies. Faculty development, we have a, a blog that we send out um, as a newsletter in the fallen in the spring, uh, but occasionally we'll, we'll just throw up an individual article too. So hopefully everyone is taking this time to, to think about it a little bit. My next one is, what types of interactions will you promote? Is there something new that you might like to try? And really maybe something that you, um, you're still teaching in a face-to-face -face course, you are going to remain teaching in a face-to-face -face course. Um, but maybe there's a way that um, you can use some of these online ideas for that course. Don says, I teach a foreign language, so I like the idea. I, so I like the out of class room experience idea. Yes. Um, and I do a uh, summer workshop on experiential learning. And one of the activities that I actually did as a um, early online student was I did a semester on the history, the arts, and the culture of winemaking. And um, I studied this particular region of France that had very sustainable practices. Um, it, it was um, had a lot of religion around it. I, I needed some religious component to it. And two years ago, I was able to go to that region of France. And so that was sort of like, the ultimate out of classroom experience. Um, but uh, talk about um, making meaning and bringing it all home. It was great to actually be able to see that that region that I had studied for so long. Um, Taylor says, I like the idea of role, uh, role playing case studies in an online course. Yes, and um, definitely it could be together role playing case study. Case studies um, are often um, done on their own. 
but absolutely, um, I've worked with faculty that um, really use that mo that mode of uh, that model of using case studies in their course, um, and it seems so real, right? Uh, faculty member I work with. Um, teaches marketing and uh, I'm sure he's okay with me sharing this um, he, he will do like um, the the downfall of Sears and, and things like that um, so he's like I've been to Sears I, I yeah you know um, so it really um, is powerful for the students with case studies and definitely possible in an online course um, so my final reflection question what type of interactions have we done together in this workshop? I've tried to model a lot of them. <laughs> Discussion, yes. Even if one of us is talking and everyone else is writing, right? The whiteboard. Yep, active participation, collaboration. Yes, we collaborated on, on grading my assignment, didn't we? The whiteboard. Yeah, the whiteboard is super fun. Um, and that is something that um, if you, you can use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra in your online courses, um, and you can do them live. That's what's um, called everybody's at the same time, but they're in different places. And um, that can definitely kind of loosen everybody up playing with a whiteboard, but then it can have real value too. Um, Tracy says, I hope to have students stop a, um, stop a voice over PowerPoint and reflect in a journal. I need assistance with first assessing performance in small group discussions. Uh, Okay, so there's sort of a lot to unpack there, but that's definitely something that we can can help you with. Um, I think if you're looking at stopping voiceover PowerPoints, there are definitely a, a few different tools we can introduce you to, or maybe even that's a choice, but not the only choice, um, and how a student um, might demonstrate their uh, mastery to you or even um, reflect. Um, assistant with first assessing performance in small group discussions. Um, so what I'm thinking about there is um, if you are assessing some type of performance, you could have them record it um, in um, just using their webcam using their cell phone. Um, they could record it in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra like we're doing and then um, giving the students maybe a rubric in order to, if they're going to be working in groups and sort of critiquing each other, um, they have that rubric in front of them so they know exactly what they should be looking for when they're assessing the other student's performance. Um, Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. <laughs> yes. Is there a, a routine way of assessing small group discussions and then, even let's say on the discussion board, and then open it up to the whole class? After. Yeah, so um, what I've seen done with that is if you um, break your students into groups, um, they would have their sort of their own personal discussion board that the other students wouldn't necessarily be involved in. Uh, they don't have access to it. Um, and then if they came, their small group came to some sort of um, consensus, then they could post that um, that discussion or even a video quite frankly of um, maybe um, you know they're presenting their case they're presenting their argument they could post that into the whole class discussion um, and then everybody would see sort of the their um, their refined work does that make sense it's sort of a use of two discussion boards. Yes, and it sounds like they can also do an audio. They can post an audio, I think, too, it sounds like. Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. So I have to make an appointment for that. <laughs> yeah, come on in. <laughs> OK. Well, we are in the last um, five to seven minutes here. Um, so I promised that I would talk about what this had to do with Quality Matters. and so. Um, what we do in these um, quality online course design series is um, 
we always wrap it up with this sort of this big sentence about how everything that we've talked about this afternoon um, relates to these different recommendations, um, standards that Quality Matters has identified. So I don't normally read right off of slides, but I will in this case because I think it's important um, to emphasize where I think it needs to be emphasized. Um, but Quality courses provide students with opportunities to engage in active learning strategies, um, act activities, which promote the achievement of the learning objective. That's what they call 5.1. That's um, the, the first strategy in this idea of um, course activities and student engagement. The courses also uh, foster interaction with you, other students, and the content that supports active learning. And that happens to be 5.2. With a clearly communicated faculty response time in conjunction with the faculty feedback plan. That's 5.3. And then um, it should be along with interacting interaction requirements for engagement. Uh, that last one, 5.4, that's a lot of those um, setting your students up for success by letting them know what the expectations are. Um, so hopefully everyone has found um, value in these recommendations um, so they can um, start to maybe incorporate them into their course or if you're early into designing a course you can think about that from the start. If you are teaching online already um, you can kind of go back and um, kind of self-review your courses um, and find maybe if there's some gaps, some improvements that can be made based off of the strategies that I've shared today and that others have shared. When I send out my um, survey, I'll, I'll send you the recording, but I'll also send you a checklist. And that checklist is something that you can just pull out, again, if you're doing a self-review of your course or if you're designing a course, and use that to um, see if you're kind of really creating this active, supportive learning environment for your online students. Uh, things we've covered today is um, some reasons why you should support your students with um, these course activities and make sure that they support your learning objectives. Um, they should have lots of activ activities for um, learning and interaction. And then, again, that really big one that keeps popping up with um, letting them know what not only what you expect from them, but what you expect from yourself. So um, response times, feedback times, um, responding to questions, um, commit to yourself that you're going to follow those response times. Um, really helpful to your students when you aren't meeting face to face. They want to feel like you're there um, and uh, that they're connecting with you on a regular basis. Um, Dawn says, thank you, you're welcome. Um, Ta-ta, glad you could stay this long. Um, look for the recording. Um, and again, thank you everyone so much for being here this afternoon. I'm just going to throw my contact information up. Um, Teresa, I know I'm going to hear from you. We're going to uh, figure out how we're going to do these small group assessments. Sounds awesome. Thank you, everyone. I'll try to stay warm. Uh, see you next time.